My dear the beloved in Christ, the Catholic Church strongly encourages frequent reception of Holy Communion because it's the easiest means to sanctify our souls and the most powerful way to strengthen them against temptation. To ensure that the faithful receive our Lord in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, the Church requires us to receive Holy Communion at least once a year during the Easter season. In the United States, the Easter season extends from the first Sunday of Lent until Trinity Sunday, a period of 104 days. If a Catholic neglects to receive Holy Communion during this time, he commits a mortal sin. What are the effects of Holy Communion? The first is an intimate union of the soul with Christ. Holy Communion is the closest union with God that our soul can ever hope to attain on earth. The word communion means united with Christ. It also means that all those who devoutly receive Holy Communion are united together by our Lord, whom they receive. Holy Communion provides spiritual nourishment for our souls, just as manna provided food for the chosen people in the desert. As food nourishes and sustains our physical life, the Holy Eucharist sustains our spiritual life, which is the grace of God. Holy Communion increases sanctifying grace in the soul and gives it a right to the actual graces necessary to preserve our love and union with Christ. These actual graces enlighten our intellect and strengthen our will to do good and avoid evil. Just as food becomes one with the body that assimilates it, so the Holy Eucharist is food of the soul incorporates us with Jesus Christ. In Holy Communion, Instead of our Lord being transformed into us, he transforms us so that we become more Christ-like. My dear beloved in Christ, Holy Communion diminishes the power of our sinful passions and strengthens us against temptation. Our Lady of Fatima said, more souls go to hell for sins of the flesh than for any other reason. This is because we have within us a strong inclination to sin, a yearning for sinful pleasure called Concupiscence. Concupiscence is the opposition of the flesh to the spirit and causes evil desires for forbidden carnal pleasure. According to the Council of Trent, in the Holy Mysteries, there is power to preserve us pure and unhurt from sin, as it were, by a heavenly medicine. It also restrains and represses the lust of the flesh. For while it inflames souls with the fire of charity, it necessarily puts out the fire of passion. Our Lord once said to St. Mechtild, the oftener a person washes himself with water, the cleaner he will be. The oftener a person receives Holy Communion, the more I live in him and he, him and me, and the purer his soul will become. Pope Pius XII has stated, it's the Holy Eucharist which lessens the ardor of passions, increases the fire of charity, gives a man detachment from lowly things, and heads him toward high and heavenly things. The devout reception of Holy Communion preserves our soul from mortal sin by increasing sanctifying grace and rendering us less sensitive to the allurements of sinful pleasures. It also repels the attacks of the devil. St. John Chrysostom has written, Like lions, we come forth from that table, terrible to the devil. My dearly beloved in Christ, purity is a very pressing problem for the young, especially for people in love. During the Second World War, a Catholic chaplain came upon Billy, found dead in no man's land. The following letter, thumb worn from much reading, was found in his wallet. The letter was written by his fiancee in the United States. Dear Billy, You'll be able to be proud of me because I shall possess the most beautiful robe that a girl can wear, the stainless robe of purity. To you, I shall be as beautiful and as pure as a lily because I receive our Lord in communion every morning. Let us pray for our vocation, for I feel too weak to bear the heavy responsibilities of a Catholic wife. Let us ever be united in the sacred heart of Jesus, whom we both love. He will keep us good and help us. With love, and sign Margaret. Small wonder that Billy loved this girl. Jesus made her soul most beautiful 
in daily Holy Communion. In this intimate union with Jesus, every morning she received her greatest help to live a pure and holy life. Therefore, not only Billy, but even our Lord could be proud of her and love her. Young couples preparing for marriage should frequently receive Holy Communion. Through the sacrament of love, they will learn to love unselfishly. Their purity is protected by the life-giving food of the soul. Since all, young and old, find this inclination evil within themselves, they need to look with confidence for help from Jesus in Holy Communion. The Church recommends frequent communion to the young who are tempted to sins against purity. The Catholic Church is the only institution that offers a means to moral recovery, and her greatest means is frequent Holy Communion. The coming of Jesus in Holy Communion awakens new love in the hearts of the youth and encourages them to love purity, a necessary condition for happiness. My dearly beloved in Christ, Holy Communion forgives venial sins, increases spiritual strength and the fervor of our love for God and neighbor. St. Augustine calls it our daily medicine. The Council of Trent says the Holy Eucharist is a remedy whereby we're delivered from our daily faults and preserved from mortal sins. The graces we receive from Holy Communion make God and spiritual things more desirable and put earthly pleasures and material things in their proper perspective. Just as bodily food repairs what you lose by daily wear and tear, so likewise this divine food is a remedy for the spiritual infirmities of every day. Ordinary food is medicinal as well as nourishing, and so is Holy Communion. As those who are ill should visit the doctor and take his medicine, so also the Catholic who feels his own weakness and is fearful of being unable to persevere in doing well has need of frequently, even daily, receiving the body of Jesus Christ. St. Ignatius of Loyola said, one of the most admirable effects of Holy Communion is to preserve our souls from falling and to help those who fall from weakness to rise again. Father Tone has written, Holy Communion was given as a strength and support for the body as well as the soul. We read of this in the lives of many saints like St. Catherine of Siena, St. Juliana, St. Rose of Lima, and St. Angela Foligno. Holy Communion gives health in another way. A virtuous life is always a healthy life. By helping us to avoid excess and lead regular lives, Holy Communion helps our health, helps our bodies. What are the advantages of frequent communion? St. Francis de Sales has written, Communicate often in order to learn how to love God. Purify yourself of your sins, to free yourself from your miseries, to console yourself in your afflictions, and to strengthen yourself against your own weakness. What is a fervent communion? Fervent Holy Communion is the communion received when the soul has been well prepared, when the soul is adorned with faith, hope, and charity, profound sentiments of adoration and humility, and a great desire of union with Christ. What is tepid communion? Tepid communion is that which is received in the state of grace, but without preparation, without devotion. This is usually done out of routine, without much forethought or afterthought. What's an unworthy communion? It is communion received when we know that we, our conscience is stained with mortal sin. A person who receives Holy Communion in the state of mortal sin commits a horrible sacrilege. We must always be free from mortal sin when receiving Holy Communion. St. Ambrose says, No one should receive the body of Christ unless he was first healed. St. John Chrysostom says, If you come pure, you come unto salvation. If you come with a bad conscience, you come unto punishment and damnation. And we know what um, St. Paul said with the Jews, they all ate the manna, but with most of them, God was not well pleased. We come to Holy Communion. We must be in the state of grace, but we should also be properly prepared. How does God often punish unworthy communions, even in this world? In the temporal order, he often punishes it by the loss of property, health, 
honor, even life itself. And the spiritual honor, by blindness of intellect, hardness of heart and evil, even final impenitence. And I'd just like to close with this story. Nothing is so hardening to the heart as a bad communion. Some gangsters in New York, Catholic by descent, were discussing a lad whom they were trying to get into their clutches. He had helped them and two or three frauds, but they felt he was not yet a reliable criminal. Get him on gambling and stealing from his employer's tail suggested one. Another said, give him a good scare. Arrange to have him present next time some guy has to be bumped off. But an experienced old felon said, take him to church and get him to make a bad communion. Believe me, he'll be ready for anything after that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.